Nice to have you all in this program, a release talk show. Thanks to God for this opportunity. Vivid view. Save and do it. Think and act like a creative person and you will become one. Say something, somebody. My name is Moses Wosu. Think and act like a creative person and you will become one. My take on this is, I believe the world started from creative thoughts, inventions. When you think something, your belief in that thing pushes you to put in action and that is what will call faith. And when you do it, it becomes you. It becomes your own creative strength. That makes you a creator. Thank you. My name is Samuel Essien. Think and act like a creative person and you will become one. Now, my thought on this is, the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Are you a positive or a negative person? I believe our thoughts also, be it positive or negative, is important. So, we must be positive in every of our doing to become creative. Thank you. My name is Organist Mimi Brad, and uh, I believe that your present reality is a uh, result of your thoughts that you had in the past. And then existence is all about your thoughts going from being just ordinary thoughts and then becoming your words and then transforming to your actions. So if you think like a creative person, you metamorphose from just thinking into saying things that are creative and then eventually your actions would become your creative reality. So if you think like a creative person, you need to act like a creative person and then you become a creative person. Thank you so much for the contribution so far from the audience. For me, Elise, it is just a matter of mindset. What is your mindset? What do you have in mind? That will translate to what you're going to act on. For instance, when I was growing up, I just had in mind that I'm going to be a big man's wife. I don't know how it's going to come from, but Judging from my background, I just feel that, you no, know, coming from a very uh, low background, I don't want to remain there. I'll be a big man's wife. And what am I today? Oh, to the glory of God, because that's my mindset. And as I was also growing up, on the pickup van, I saw future would tell. And I internalized that word, future would tell. Though I didn't know the exact meaning at that moment, but over time, God translated the meaning to me and even asked me, what is your future today? So I can tell you both then that my future has been foretold. You understand? So it's a matter of mindset. When you think uh, low about yourself, that's what you're going to become. You know, some people will say, there's poverty in my family. My great-grandfather, they are poor. My, my parents are poor. Hey, well, how am I going to break out from the poverty? It's, all, it's, it's already there. It's, 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 it's just in the, in the family. No. What do I say? No. You can break it out as you propose in your mind. So you're going to add it. All right, enough of this. We'll continue for the program for today. Over the years and even now, some individuals conclude in their mind without putting up a fight that they can never measure up with their colleagues in terms of achievement. Hmm. Overcoming imposter syndrome and impact is the topic for today's consideration. We'll go out for a break now. When we come back, the guests will introduce. Please stay tuned. Vivid View. Say it and do it. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, the topic again is overcoming imposter syndrome and impacts. And with me in the studio today is a banker. Let's make welcome Mrs. Docker's top. Vivid View. Say and do it. Before discussion proper, please follow us on our social media handles are displayed on the screen. Welcome again, Docas. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, thank you. Can we have your introduction, definitions, and perspective of this subject matter? Imposter syndrome. I mean, when you think of the word imposter, what does it mean? It simply means impersonation, right? Mm. That you're impersonating somebody, you're an imposter. Mm. Um, let me allay your fears. Mm. Imposter <laughs> syndrome mm. is not a disease. At all. Right? I mean, when you think about some other medical conditions like Down syndrome, mm. um, imposter syndrome is not a disease. Not at all. It's actually a feeling, an emotion mm. that 
um, comes when you just feel like you're not worthy. Um, you know, you're um, inadequate. Mm. Um, you're not good enough, as it were. Mm. And that has a root within, you know, self-doubt, um, how you see yourself, how you also see other people. And so you are just um, at a point where you feel like, you know what, I can't do this. Mm. Even though you are actually good enough to do what you're about to do, but there's that feeling of... Inadequacy. Been, inadequacy, yeah. exactly. Mm. You know, that what you've been doing so far... It's not you who has been mm -hmm. doing it. You know, you're surprised at the achievements that you have made so mm -hmm. far, thinking that, well, um, you, some, someone's going to find out one day that, you know, I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's that feeling and there's a fear that comes with that. And mm -hmm. that's really what it's about. It's a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to discuss more on it today. Mm -hmm. Now, this takes me to the next question. Who are more likely susceptible to experience imposter syndrome? Well, the experts say that 70% you know, of people will experience imposter syndrome at least once in a lifetime. Um, for me, I think it's actually more than that. Um, mm. Just you know, think about yourself. Um, mm. Has there been time where you have been afraid to do something very important? Mm -hmm. Has there been time where you felt like you're, you're inadequate mm -hmm. or you're not good enough? That you cannot do it. That you can't do mm -hmm. it. Even though you have done it several, several mm -hmm. times before. Mm -hmm. Even though this is a skill that you mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you think about it like that, you will see that almost everybody um, has experienced this at least once in their lifetime. And will experience it at least once in their lifetime. However, there are some people who are more prone to it. Um, for example, people um, who have been through traumatic experiences, right? One trauma, or, you know, big or small, but then that has created a feeling of unworthiness within them. They are also more susceptible to um, feeling this way. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, high-performing people. Yeah. It's very important. I mean, people who are high flyers, yeah, they've high done flyers, fantastic yeah. things before, but every time they, they get on stage, every time there's an opportunity to do something yeah. great, they have that, you know, fear that am I going to be like enough? a stage fright, something Sta like that. You can say stage yeah. fright. Mm -hmm. um, you find that even when I mean performers, um, people in entertainment, mm -hmm. public speakers who've done this over and over again would still at the point of getting on stage have that fear like, am I going to be good mm -hmm. at this point? <laughs> you know, so um, these are some of the people who would experience this more. And lastly, I think that people who have very high expectations on them, for example, first bonds, mm -hmm. right? You know that first bonds have this expectation of you have to be great. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, lead the family. Especially male. Male children, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. high expectations, leaders, Mm -hmm. um, tend to always, you know, fear and, and have that feeling like I would not be able to deliver. You know, I wouldn't be able to meet the expectations that, you know, are on me. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who would really experience it. But again, everybody at one point um, or the other have experienced that fear of I'm not good enough. So invariably, we will we'll not... <laughs> so invariably, we cannot compare it to low self-esteem. Self -esteem. Um, can it be that? Can it be linked to that? Low yes, it can. It can. And you, you would see that even the way to overcome imposter syndrome is quite similar to the way to overcome low self-esteem. Self -esteem, yeah. It's really about self-confidence, building yeah. confidence. Courage. Yeah, and courage. courage. All right, thank you so much for that. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll continue. Vivid view. Safe and do it. This is the view.